and welcome to the Gazette discussion for 9th August 2021. My name is Harsh Singh and this discussion will include many interesting articles from Edukimi's daily newsletter, Our Gazette. The video is divided in two components. The first video is on the featured article which today is on permanent commission to women in the armed forces. Now, Supreme Court has very recently given a judgment saying that women be given equal stakeholdership, equal permanent commission as compared to the men right in the armed forces. So in this article, we will understand what is the need for women to be a part of the permanent workforce? What is the need for women? The second one is what are the impediments? What are the obstructions in this process? What is the way forward? We will also discuss two important issues that pertain to women in the armed forces. One, their participation in combat missions and their participation as commanders in the command positions. So these are the important sensitive issues we will discuss in the featured section. Now, the second video will include the rest of the articles which are on first, this day in history dedicated to world's indigenous people. The second is new snapshots, new snapshots. Now, Nara Yuria is an innovation by India and we will study what is this innovation about. Now, fast track quotes is the second new snapshot which talks about women and child specific quotes. Image of the day is from Tanzania, Zanzibar on sponge farming. Terms and concept. The four terms and concept for you today are one, e present project. The second one is plastic mixed handmade paper. So a beautiful innovation which is about recycling of the plastic and creating a sort of paper, right? Constitution, tribal, scheduled tribes, order bill, which relates to tribes from, from Arunachal Pradesh. And the fourth one is brother or our Rabindranath Tagore, Abhinindranath Tagore, right? Then we have territorials. The first one talks of India at United Nations Security Council sharing it. The second one is on the employment rates which have been reflected through periodic labor force survey report and some intricacies about this particular report. And the third one is on India's coal power plants which have been outdated. We have discussed this article in the snapshots. We will cover this again through this editorial. Case study of the day is on the man who won the gold medal for India at the Olympics. So let's start the discussion. We will start our discussion with case study of the day. Why? Because it is very touching and special to me. This case study is about Neil Chopra, the man who not only won gold for India, but won accolades throughout, through and through. He has not only won accolades because he has done excellent in the field, but also because of the values that he has depicted all the while. This is what has helped him achieve success. And this is what is also an insight into how we are and what we could be, right? So the person who was actually entitled to win gold was not he. It was Wetter, Wetter from Germany who was entitled, uh, who was almost probable to win gold. Why? Because his throws were almost 90 meters throughout the whole season. But in this final, he did not score well. And, and our, our gentleman, our Neera Chopra, he empathized with him. He says, I feel good for my win, but I empathize, I feel bad for how he performed on that particular day. So, an empathy, this is a very important value which helps anybody sail through tough times, right? Tough times for others. And this is how winners are created, right? Altruism, he has a very important value of altruism. He only focuses on, on his important goal and he doesn't care about other things, right? So, when people spoke of what will he do with so much of money, he has also won previous gold medals in Asian Games and other games, right? So, people asked him, what will you do with this kind of job? You have a job, government job. What will you do? He said, no, I will focus on Olympic gold. So, focus is one important parameter. And altruism, people borrowed a lot of money from him. He never cared for that. He always took uh, his work as his first priority and altruism. He never even cared. He, anybody coming to him, he would always support them. So, these are some of the values which actually help anybody achieve the height of greatness. And this is what Neera Chopra has achieved. We have dedicated this day in history to the world's indigenous people because this was the day, 9th August 1982, when the first time the United Nations Working Group on Indigenous Population, it celebrated International Day for World's Indigenous People, right? So what are these indigenous people? These are the original inhabitants of that particular region. The way we see United States of America today is not what it was 400 years back. Right? Most of the people who are here in the United States are migrants, migrants from Europe, migrants from China, migrants from all around the world, including Africa as well. Right? But who are the original inhabitants? So, Native Americans, this is how they look like. If you have seen movies like Last of the Mohicans, you would find them. Right? Now, the original inhabitants of America, they are hardly 1.3% of the population. Where have they gone? Which place of the world, which part of the world they have gone to? 
they are no more existent why because they either died of the diseases the kind of new diseases which which were brought in by the migrants european migrants and migrants from other countries or they were persecuted they were killed in various kind of wars right so this is why united nations has uh, dedicated a particular day for indigenous people right similarly if you look at australia if you look at new zealand many people residing in these countries are not original people not original inhabitants they are the migrants from europe the migrants from the polynesian and polynesian countries right the original inhabitants they are reduced to a fraction of that particular country right so the idea the theme of this year is leave no one behind so this day in history New snapshot. The first snapshot for you today is on nano urea. Why is it in use? It is in use because ITCO has produced a new kind of uh, urea called as the nano urea. The world's first nano urea. Um, important. That's why important for India. Now this urea is very good because now it has also enhanced crop yield for the farmers. And there is a lot of efficiency in this kind of urea utilization. This is what we will study in this article, right? Now, nano urea are very small particles of urea. When urea is thrown in the in the crop fields, right? If we have bigger particles, then they have some particular efficiency. But imagine if the particles are very very small in size, minuscule in size. Now these particles will have greater surface area, right? So then their effect will be high, right? They will have greater efficiency. Also, they will be more advantage is in terms of how much we throw because the surface area is high because we have we are using smaller particles the effective surface area of the same amount of urea for example one kilo of urea in one boulder and then we have one kilo of urea in small particles this is more efficient because surface area is high and they will actually benefit the plant growth in more percentage here so this is what has been explored now with respect to nano urea there will be less utilization of urea products less utilization of na uh, the nitrogen component and therefore it will lead to less eutrophication right less wastage of nitrogen so we will save money for the farmers there will be increased earnings less eutrophication because more nutrient if they flow because of runoff it will lead to eutrophication it will also lead to bioaccumulation and biomagnification right that means if the nutrients go to these ponds and lakes they will eventually lead to formation of algae and death death of other kind of organisms so this is what it will also prohibit and this is what nano urea has done for us right now in this article we will see the meaning of nano urea and certain important benefits of the same right these nano scale nitrogen particles right this is what the nano urea uh, primarily is about right this is the first thing the second one is that the benefits uptake efficiency now nitrogen use usage efficiency is taken in two considerations right uptake efficiency and the second one is the use efficiency uptake efficiency is the xylem efficiency right so the absorption of nitrogen is increased if the particles are very small the second one is their utility by the body by the body of the particular plant that also increases if these are small particles so they are added benefits for using these particles now it also reduces as i mentioned the cost to the laborer cost to the farmer right it also increases the in income because there is an increased efficiency of the product right it is environment friendly why because we are using less nitrogen i just mentioned that so repeating the point again there is enhanced crop productivity because the use efficiency has increased as much as 50% so earlier use efficiency was 30 to 50% if we are giving 100 particles only 30 to 50 particles would be used and now this efficiency has increased by 50% because of these nanoparticles so that is why it is very very important for us right it is also helpful in environmental protection right this is the news the second snapshot is on the continuation of the fast track codes now more fund has been given by the central government to continue these fast track codes especially for women women related crimes and the children so fox supports right now first time recommended by the level finance commission in 2000 right the main idea was to bring down the cases against women and to ensure that the child related cases also fall so these courts ran for around 11 years and after that the central government said we don't have funds for this right and this is when central government funding stopped so some of the courts that were fast track courts they were changed to regular courts regular courts why because a lot of infrastructure, a lot of training was also already given. So to regular courts, some of the courts still continued because some states wanted to continue these kind of courts and some courts, some states stopped these kind of courts. So this is what was the future. But in 2012, an important event happened in the month of 
December. The Nirbhaya rape case. And after that, the government instituted special funds, right? The government incorporated the fast track courts as well in Delhi. And then a lot of cases which were pending, especially against women, they were treated. So this Nirbhaya case compelled the government to initiate a Nirbhaya fund to have the Mahila courts to have one-stop centers, right? Now these are the centers which are still not functional fully. But the main idea has been uh, imparted through fast track courts. That is one to have the dedicated courts for special special needs. For example, women, for example, children, the vulnerable section. The second one is faster dispensation of these kind of uh, these kind of cases. And the third, the most important one is to deter to deter the persons who are committing these type of crimes to ensure that the the justice is met right for the right persons and also for the persons who are perpetrators of these kind of crimes. So this is the update. Image of the day is on sponge farming. So sponge, these are not artificial objects, but these are the organisms. Sponge are important organisms in marine sphere. Now this is an important sponge farming activity being done in Zanzibar in Tanzania. Now how does it help? Now earlier fishes were being exploited, right? So these fishes which have not grown, right? Also their over exploitation in the marine sphere, instead of that, if farming is done, right? If farming, sea farming is done, that is a beneficial activity. So we are not exploiting the fish resources, we are doing farming here, right? So this is what is being done. Earlier, seaweed also was being farmed, but because of changes in sea temperature, because of pollution in sea, this is also not a very fruitful, economically fruitful activity. And this is why farmers in Zanzibar and Tanzania they have said that fine, we will get into this kind of farming, the sponge farming. So sponges are also used as water filters. They are also used in cosmetics. So these sponges are important organisms. The, they, they don't have a body uh, like, for example, they don't have a respiratory system, a circulatory system. The presence of water, the way it goes out of the sponge, right? That helps them to pass on the nutrition inside themselves. That helps them to excrete whatever products they have to excrete. So this is how the sponges function. They are important articles for utility, for economic activity as well, right? Now, this is what the sponges look like, right? Now, where is the Zanzibar? Zanzibar is an important island, important autonomous region in the state of, in the province, in the country of Tanzania in Africa. So this is Tanzania and this small island to the east is Zanzibar. It is an autonomous region in, in Tanzania. So Zanzibar has two islands, one is Zanzibar and one is Pemba, right? So Zanzibar city is the main capital of the Zanzibar autonomous region. Term and concept. The first term and concept is e-present project. Now, the update is that the Ministry of Home Affairs has provided financial assistance for the completion of this e prison project. The three components of it are, one, to have a prison information management system. So, how many prisoners do exist here, the daily activities, etc. will be a part of it. Second one is having the national prisoner database, right? So, how many prisons do exist around the country, what is their capacity, all those things. And the third one is Kara Bazaar, that means prison. Kara is prison and bazaar means the market. So prison market where the important uh, products which are which are created by the prisoners rigorous in, in, in rigorous imprisonment, they can be sold through online media as well, right? So the main idea is to have computerization and functioning of the whole prison system through computerized mechanisms, right? The prison will be integrated with police system and it will also be integrated with judiciary system. This is the main update. The second term and concept in use is plastic mix handmade paper. Now this is an important paper. Why? Because plastic is being used. The plastic which has been destructured, later degraded, diluted and then and then refined along with the paper to produce important uh, kind of recycled paper. And this helps to reduce the cost of the product as well, right? This also helps to protect the environment because the plastic is being recycled. It also helps to create sustainable products like these new innovative products. So this is what has been patented by KVIC, Khadi and Village Industries Commission. This is the update article. So do remember these kind of innovative products. The third term and concept in news is Constitution Scheduled Rights Order Amendment Bill 2021. Now, what happens is that uh, these marginalized sections like Scheduled Tribes, Scheduled Caste, the government is mandated to ensure that the specific part of fund be spent on them, right? And therefore, the names of these tribes become very important. What is the name of the tribe on which the spending is happening? Right? Because if suppose I am from Mishmi tribe from Arunachal Pradesh and the name of Mishmi tribe actually was Mishmi Kaman. 
so fund might not be issued on the name of Mishmi because Mishmi Kamar is the name and therefore a lot of changes have been done in Arunachal Pradesh, right? So a lot of amendments have been done relating to the state of Arunachal Pradesh and the tribe in the state. The names have been amended so that the proper benefits, the proper financial resources be given to the state in accordance to the tribes living in that particular state. Abhinandar Nath Tagore, the fourth common concept in news. Before we get into his details, let us understand the Tagores first. So we had Devendra Nath Tagore, an important person, an important philosopher who also followed Brahmo Samaj given by given by Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Right? He was the son of Dwarka Nath Tagore. So he was an important industrialist. Devendra Nath Tagore had 14 children, and one of them was Rabin Nath Tagore. His brother was Satyendra Nath Tagore. He was the first Indian civil servant, right? Okay. And his cousin, Rabin Nath's cousin, was Abhinandar Nath Tagore. So these were Satyendra Nath, Rabin Nath, Abhinandar Nath. They were from the same generation, Devendra Nath, one preceding, and then we had their grandfather as well, who was an important industrialist. Okay. So what about Abhinandar Nath Tagore is that his birth anniversary was celebrated, right? Why is he important? He is important because he was one important person who introduced reforms in Indian art and culture, which were modern according to those times. So he he was the one who painted Bharat Mata painting. He was the one who introduced good forms, good reformations in Mughal and Rajput style architecture painting in consonance with what was British's paintings at that time. This is important because because whatever these artists they depict, they depict through their paintings and, and sculptures. Now, this is what the princes of those times, the Mughal princes and the Rajput princes would follow. And later, the whole bunch of people would also later follow. And this is how the whole society would lift itself up to the generation, all, all contemporary to the Western models of those times. Editorials of the day. The first editorial for today is on India being a part of United Nations Security Council in the capacity of its chair. Right? So, India is the chair in the month of August, all been in the news. In fact, we will also cover this in the, in the feature section tomorrow. And today, a quick update about it. Right, India has contributed in terms of United Nations peacekeeping force. India is a major economic contributor throughout the world. Right, India has got one of the highest populations in the whole world. And therefore, India deserves to be a part of the permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. United Nations Security Council is an important body. Why? Because this is the body which elects the United Nation Secretary General. This is the body which ensures that binding resolutions are passed and whatever it passes, Security Council passes, they are followed by the United Nations General Assembly. Right? It is the one which elects judges for International Court of Justice. So this is a very important body and this time India has passed a resolution rel related to maritime security. We will discuss this in tomorrow's feature article as well. India also has been a part of this this, uh, this body, United Nations Security Council, as a non-permanent member the eighth time now. And therefore, this is high, high time India being a part of permanent member, right? Now, this is where I would like to point out G4 countries. G4 countries, which are those? India, Japan, Germany, and Brazil. So, these are the four countries which have sought permanent membership in the United Nations Security Council. And which are the countries which are against this? Against this G4 group, coffee club. So, countries like Pakistan. Italy, right, certain other important countries, Korea, etc. They are saying, no, no, if you are including G4, we are, we are also a part of it. So, according to their economic capacity, their population, they have also tried to be a part of the whole workforce. The second editorial of the day is on the periodic labor force survey report. Now, this report says that, yes, we have seen declining unemployment in India. That means employment is increasing. But there is an important loophole here. If we are seeing the report in perspective of 365 days, 365 day approach, we will see that there is more employment, right? Because we have not observed the, the small the people, the people who are into intermittent casual unemployment, right? So, if we observe in the seven day period, we will find that there is more unemployment in India. This is one intricacy which has not been observed. The second it says is that there has been an increase in the people who are self employed, right? So, self employed people are in three categories one, who are, who are unemployed. The second, who have employed other people, and the third, unpaid family workers. And this is where the third category is where people have increased. Unpaid family workers are the ones which are actually underemployed. They are the one in disguise unemployment. So actually, employment rate has not increased. This is what the article focuses and 
emphasizes on. The article also says that the quality of employment has decreased. Why? Because the wages of people have decreased. There is more uncertainty in these kind of employment activities. Also, there has been an increase in feeble labor, labor force, specifically in agriculture activities. You know why? Because most of the people from urban areas have gone to rural areas, especially the females.